Honors Algebra 2 pre-calc, we're doing 2.5 still, which is find the inverse uh, function. So, yeah, we're going to do E3 and P3, and then we'll do an E4 and P4 that are similar, finding inverse functions. Um, and then I'll show you a kind of cool trick that you can use on some of the easier versions of this problem if you so choose. So, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the horizontal line test and a few other things and, and, and such like that. All right, so uh, let's move forward. So remember, the first thing we want to do, you want to recognize that this is y, right? So it's y equals the cube root of 2x plus 1. And then in order to find the inverse, you're going to switch, right? So x equals the cube root of 2y plus 1. And then you're going to solve for y, right? So solve for y, you're going to do that using sadmap, right? So, uh, so I'm going to do subtraction and addition first. There isn't any. There isn't any division and multiplication, but there is an exponent. So I'm going to deal with that exponent by cubing both sides. So I'm going to get x cubed equals 2y plus 1. And then I loop back to subtraction and addition, division, multiplication, because I'm inside the parentheses now, right? So I, I go back to the beginning. Uh, I see that there is subtraction and addition, so I get x cubed minus 1 equals 2y. That was subtraction and addition. Then I see there is division and multiplication. I divide everybody by 2. And again, I'm going to leave it with everybody just over 2 because I think that's easier. But if you want to split it up, you could. Uh, and then the last thing I need to do is make sure that I use the correct notation, right, which in this case will be f inverse of x because the original was f. And I'm going to write it as x cubed minus 1 all over a 2, right? That's probably the best answer because it's the one that requires the least work and, and therefore involves the fewest mistakes or possibilities for mistakes. If you wanted to write it as two separate fractions or if you wanted to write that coefficient of x cubed as a 1 half out in front, uh, you certainly could, right? Uh, another version of this, if you wanted, would be to have the 1 half out in front instead of over 2 in front of that x cubed minus 1 quantity. Any of those are a right answer, right? Uh, one of the things is that it's, uh, sorry, didn't realize the angle was not quite right for you. Okay, uh, so one of the things to note is that um, it's your math teacher's job to notice which answer is right, unless it's multiple choice, in which case it's your job to make your answer match the right answer. Uh, but any of these answers should be acceptable, right? I think this is the easiest. Uh, but it's, it's not your job to make sure that your answer is in a particular format unless you are required to do so by a teacher uh, or unless it's multiple choice or, or something. So uh, you can pause me if you want. I'm going to go ahead and walk through uh, P3, right? Remember that this is actually the same as a Y. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch them and make this X equals the cube root of this whole fraction, uh, Y plus 2 all over 4, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump right to, so I'm doing sad math, right? Uh, but I notice that the first thing I get to is exponent. So I'm going to get an x cubed equals y plus 2 all over a 4, right? I notice that the next thing, there's no subtraction and addition, but there is division and multiplication. I can multiply that 4 over. So I get a 4x cubed equals y plus 2, right? And now I'm back to the beginning because this was all secretly inside parentheses, right? Uh, so I'm back to subtraction and addition, and I get 4x cubed. Uh, minus 2 equals my y. So then uh, once I get to this spot, all I need to do is write it in the proper notation, uh, which is going to be g inverse because this function was g, uh, and that's going to be a 4x cubed minus 2. And again, I'd say that's the best possible version of that answer. If you really wanted to do a little extra work for whatever reason, you could factor out a 2 and make this a 2x cubed minus 1. But again, that's a weird option, right? Less work is better than more work in pretty much every instance involving math. All right, cool. Let's... Uh, Take it up a notch. So for E4 and P4, what's going to be tricky about this is we're going to have more than one uh, Y to solve for. So in E4, we're going to do F of X equals, let's do 2X plus 3 over X minus 2. Uh, and in P4, let's call it G of X equals, let's do 6x plus 1 over x minus 3. Cool. All right. So uh, now we're going to find these inverse functions again, right? So uh, again, the first thing I need to do is recognize that this is actually secretly a y, right? So when I switch them, I switch out this y for an x, and I change all the x's to y's. Now the problem with this is that there are multiple y's that I need to solve for, and that's tricky. So when I go to solve, what I'm going to do is, first thing, nobody likes a fraction. So I'm going to multiply this thing over to the other side and get x times the y minus 2 equals a 2y plus 3. Now remember, x, since we're solving for y, right, so, so what we're doing here is we're solving for y, 
when we're solving for y, just like we saw in literal equations way back in like 1.5, uh, when we're solving for y, we have to treat every other letter like it's just a number, right? Sorry, computer zonked. Every other letter like it's just a number. So that means that x is just a coefficient. It's just a number. So I'm going to get x times y minus 2x equals 2y plus 3. I'm going to move all the y's because that's the thing I want to the left-hand side. So I'm going to move the y's to the left-hand side and the non-y's to the right-hand side. So to do that, I'm going to subtract this 2y over. So I'm going to get xy minus 2y and I'm going to add this 2x over, so I get a 2x plus 3, right? Now what I'm going to do is take out that y, because the y is the thing I want to solve for. So I'm going to take out that GCF of y and be left with an x minus 2. Remember that this is just a number because I'm trying to solve for y. So I can divide that x minus 2 over, and I'm going to need a little bit more room. So if we come up here, I'm going to get that y is that 2x plus 3 divided by that x minus 2. My final step is to make sure that I have the correct notation. Right? The correct notation would be f inverse of x equals 2x plus 3 over x minus 2, which is crazy because I inadvertently did a, just an insane thing, which is I accidentally gave you a function that is its own inverse. That was totally accidental. So this is a complete and total coincidence okay, um, that f of x is its own, that's not how you spell its, is its own inverse. Now, this is not a thing that happens very often, okay? Um, this is actually fairly rare, and I just stumbled upon it by picking an assortment of numbers. Now, I could go back and pretend it didn't happen, uh, but that's silly because it totally did happen. It's just really nuts that, uh, that f of x is its own inverse in this instance, but it totally is. So, um, anywho, we're going to keep moving forward. That's really rare. Um, again, total coincidence that f and f inverse we're the same function. It does happen, but it's rare. All right, so let's do P4. Uh, I promise you're not really supposed to get the same answer that you started with in most instances, and you shouldn't in G, uh, you shouldn't get G inverse of X is the same as G of X. If you do, then really like it is the weirdest statistical anomaly that I managed to out of my brain just make up two functions, but let's walk through this. So uh, again, uh, you can pause me if you want. So why? All right, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is switch them, right? I'm gonna switch and make this uh, x equals 6y plus 1 over y minus 3. I'm going to multiply to get rid of that fraction. So when I solve for y, remember when we solve for y, everybody else is just a number. So when I multiply this y minus 3 over, I'm going to get an xy minus a 3x, right? On the other side, I have a 6y plus 1. So I'm going to move all my y's to the left-hand side. So y's to the left-hand side, right? And x's to the right-hand side. So I'm going to get xy minus 6y equals 3x plus 1, right? I'm going to yank out that y, because that's what I'm trying to solve for, times this x minus 6 equals 3x plus 1, and I'm going to divide that over. So I'm going to get y equals 3x plus 1 over x minus 6, and then my notation is g inverse of x equals 3x plus 1 over x minus 6. Now, uh, interestingly enough, we probably could make a stipulation here just based on seeing what happened. It seems that what ended up happening was that these two numbers switched places, right? The 6 and the, and the 3 switched places. And based on that logic, it doesn't seem like a super shock that this turned out to be its own inverse because the 2s switched places and they were both 2s. Uh, it's hard to know. But that, that's, you know. So, uh, again, we could probably make a stipulation and see if that works in every case. That would be kind of fun to do. Maybe we should do that just for fun. Yeah, that could be cool. I think we should do that. Uh, so I'm curious if we can just for fun find a formula that proves that I can show that something of this form is, is its own inverse. Um, so uh, I think that's what I'm going to do just for fun. Uh, again, if you want to totally tune me out, you can. Uh, but I'm going to do that. And then that'll be the end of this video and we'll do some other stuff in the next video. But just for fun, I'm curious if we can see. Uh, so let's, let's see. This is, uh, again, this is the last thing I'm doing in this video. So if you're totally not into this and you're like, this seems awful, then just don't do it. Okay, so so I, I'm curious. When I make a, a, a problem and I notice that it accidentally ends up being something sort of special or unique, I'm curious if I can find a stipulation, right? So, um, so let's just see what happens if f of x is ax plus b over cx plus d. Let's find f inverse, right? So we're going to find f inverse of x and see if we can see that there's a pattern, right? Um, so again, I'm going to go ahead and, and switch my x's and y's. So this is now an x, and I'm going to get a y plus b over c y plus d, right? When I multiply this over, I'm going to get 
uh, essentially a CXY plus a DX equals AY plus B, right? I want all my Y's on the left hand side, so I'm going to get CXY minus AY equals negative DX plus B, right? Uh, and then I factor out the Y and I get a CX minus A equals a negative DX plus B, right? Uh, and divide that over. So I get that Y if we bring this over here, I get that y is negative dx plus b over cx minus a. So that means that I get that f inverse of x is negative dx plus b over cx minus a. Okay, so interesting thing to notice. Let's make a couple like interesting observations, right? First thing I noticed that cx is the same as cx and that b is the same as b. So it doesn't matter what you choose them to be. And then what I notice is that the only real difference is that this ends up being the opposite of d, and this ends up being the opposite of a. So if a is the opposite of d, then in this unique situation, f inverse would be the same as f of x. And that's exactly what happened in the E4 that I designed, right? Uh, and you can see that if, if a was the opposite of d, then this, this negative d would be a, which is the same, and this negative a would be positive d. So sure enough, if I picked opposite numbers here, like if this is a negative 2 and this is a positive 2, or if this is a negative 3 and a positive 3, uh, yeah, interesting. So, because um, this would be, just to be clear, this would be like plus a negative a, if that's an easier way to see it, right? Um, so again, if, if these two numbers are uh, essentially opposite, right? Um, if a is the opposite of d, then, then I would have a situation where they turn out to be the same. So that was just a dumb coincidence that I picked those numbers and they worked out the same, but it's fun to figure out. Um, so just as an example, like here are some functions that would inadvertently be their own inverse, right? So, so if I picked f of x, is 3x plus 1 over uh, 5x minus 3. Because this number is the opposite of this number. Uh, this is a positive 3, it's a negative 3. If I picked this function, uh, let's say a negative 10x plus 1 over, oh, it doesn't have to be a 1. Let's just pick a 7, right? Uh, over 2x plus 10, right? See so yeah, how that's a minus 10, it's positive. So it would end up being its own inverse. And that's just a coincidence, and that's not a thing worth memorizing. Um, but one of the cool things about math is that when we notice something happens, so it depends on the kind of person that you are, and it depends on how into it you are. But if you notice that something happens repeatedly, or that like something unexpected happens in a particular problem, sometimes if you're a certain type of person, it's worth investigating why, just because, because uh, knowledge is power and learning stuff is cool. Uh, so yeah, that was a random thing that I didn't know and will keep in mind when designing future examples. But there you have it. So that's this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about composition of functions, uh, and we're also going to talk about uh, the horizontal line test.